Well, the old question about what if you had a party and nobody came has been answered. Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming tonight. And I'm Greg Munn. I'm chair of the uh, P White Lake Public Advisory Council. All right. And of course, <laughs> as much as anything, I'm the uh, MC tonight, making sure we try to stay on track and get everybody out on a timely fashion. But first, <clears throat> everybody that has an agenda, if you can take your ink pen and you know how you make a little carrot to add in words above, right behind White Lake, carrot, add in delisted. And we start. So, we found out this morning about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, there was an announcement out of the US EPA out of Washington that Deer Lake, uh, one of the areas of concern in uh, Upper Peninsula, and White Lake, who were all being under consideration with the State Department, announced that we're officially delisted. We're no longer on the toxic hot list of the Great Lakes. Yeah. Uh, and with that, I want to uh, take one minute, and all the public advisory council, council members, both present and past, if you would please stand. There's way too many of you, but I want to acknowledge that these are the individuals, the citizens in our community that have made that difference. Just stand up and raise your hands and give them a round of applause. To recognize those as individual champions that really carried the water for the whole community, and representing all you here, because we all have that great concern about the water quality of White Lake and the future of it. And we've passed one phase. We still got some work to do, but at least uh, we're delisted as that area of concern. Uh, with that, uh, our mayor for Montague, Jim Neubauer, come up and say a few words and recognizing our great city and, and the lake. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm sure glad to be here. I had a fellow a while ago asked me if I had a speech all made up. And I said, sure I do. Look at the headlines in that beacon. <laughs> How about that? And then he just, just stole part of my thunder. I was going to tell you that delisting was coming up the end of this month or the first of next month. Yep. It's here. It's here. It's we got here. a present. So, with that, I'm Jim Neubauer, the mayor of Montague. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all here, to, all here tonight to the city of Montague and the White Lake area. Uh, we're here to celebrate, celebrate the restoration and the delisting of uh, White Lake. Uh, like I said, delisting is anticipated by the end of 214 or 215, but it's here. So we can really celebrate tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And with that, the Honorable um, Mac Hatch, Mayor of Whitehall, say a few words as well. There's, both these gentlemen have been in the community a long time and have worked for that culmination. Go ahead, Mac. Greg wants me to say ditto like I always do, but uh, I'm going to say a few more words. Uh, this is just a great deal, and I'd like to welcome uh, friends and visitors. In fact, you're all friends. And the timing of this uh, event tonight is unbelievable. I mean, I think you got to give the, the pack, everybody that was worked so hard for this, a great hand. And now, I'd like to have our esteemed county chair, county commission, Ken Mahoney, who's been a lifelong resident and has worked on the Public Advisory Council well before we were formed in the early 90s. So, Ken. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ken Mahoney, and I'm currently the chairperson of the Muskegon County Commission. But more importantly for tonight, 
I'm the Vice Chair of the White Lake Public Advisory Council. And along with my wife, a longtime defender of the health of Lake Lake, we're here today to celebrate the delisting of the lake from an International Joint Commission Area of Concern program. It's a monumental achievement. And to quote Mayor Hatch, it's a big deal. It is a big deal. It should lift the shroud from the community and let us enjoy the light. There were those early on, even before the AOC designation, that raised the alarm about the damage that was occurring to the lake. The picketing, the civil disobedience, and other activities were not always popular, but it did bring the issue to the forefront. Just as a little photo, the person here is my daughter. She was four years old at the time. She's now 38. That tells you that this system has been in a process for a very long time. Read the sign. Oh, the sign that she was carrying, it says, Mama, don't let them bring any more stinky stuff here. <laughs> the AOC designation, however, gave us an impetus to how to fix what others had pointed out. Next came the step when a group of citizens and the community in general began the long and difficult process of defining the problem and putting together programs to address those issues. That was 22 years ago, and we're now at a point that the community can justifiably be proud of its achievements. I would also add, like a graduation, however, this is not the end, but only the beginning of a new phase of maintaining the gains that have been made over the past 22 years and continuing to make the improvements to the quality of the lake. As we move forward, we hope we'll be able to make the old marketing phrase, White Lake the Beautiful, a reality. And the County Commission, in recognizing the achievement of the community, has passed a resolution honoring the community in general. I won't bother to read that. I will leave it here. Um, and someone will take good care of it, I'm sure. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Now, and Tanya, why don't you go ahead and explain, because this was a contest, I believe. No, no. Oh, okay. No, um, we have just... Hit earlier contest. No, we've had a contest. That was last year, Greg. Uh, we we were, um, were very impressed with both schools and very excited to see the, the passion that the kids have for White Lake and, and the, you know, our natural resources. And um, both of them are just really um, stellar examples of stewardship. And so it's exciting to see that because they're going to be some of the folks who are going to be taking care of the lake um, in the future and even right now. And so um, this is Jen Zegda's class from Montague, Montague Middle School, and they've written, they've written poems that they're going to read about um, restoration and recovery. And I'm gonna help them with the mic, right? Okay. This is a big deal. <laughs> there, no. No. Hi, my name is Bailey Bellinger, and I'm a sixth grader at NBC Middle School. The title of my poem is Improving White Lake. Listing, damaged, wounded, polluting, dying, decaying, chemicals, lake, repair, progress, helping, changing, improving, overjoyed, celebrated, delisted. Alexis Martian, I'm a sixth grader at NBC Middle School. My poem is called Improving White Lake. Mistakes, accidents, harming, misusing, damaging, avoiding, pollution, debris, habitat, wildlife, boating, swimming, fishing, safe, respectful, responsibility.
Hi, my name is Cody Puffpaff, and I'm a sixth grader at U Middle School. The title of my poem is D.L.S. White Lake. Listed, trouble, harm, damage, threatening, ruining, chemicals, pollution, progress, repairs, cleaning, living, helping, improvement, recovery, delisted. My name is Gary Knapp, and I'm a sixth grader at Montague NBC Middle School, and the title of my poem is Repairing White Lake. Trouble, wounded, unhealthy, threatening, hurting, destroying, debris, pollution, regulation, wildlife, reviving, repairing, helping, clean, healthy recovery. Hi, my name is Megan Brown and I am a sixth grader at NBC Middle School. The title of my poem is Delisting of White Lake. Harm, polluted, damaged, hurting, suffering, disappointing, waste, chemicals, laws, improvement, Healing, saving, helping, clean, beautiful recovery. Very nice job. Wanted to mention over, um, where is Susan Tate? Um, Susan Tate's class from Whitehall Middle School prepared a piece of artwork. There she is. And that's on display over there. So thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate your participation. I think we found the champions for the next 25, 30 years. So, and with that, I have the pleasure of introducing our senator, Debbie Stabenow, who is currently the vice chair of the bipartisan Great Lakes Task Force, which is a key element in regards to the, creating the funding for the Great Lakes and focusing federal resources here in our uh, pristine waters and ma maintaining them. And the, for, the program was the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Uh, there's been nearly $5 million invested in cleaning up White Lake, and I think it reminds us to make sure it stays that way. Uh, and whether she's been in the Michigan legislature, the U.S. House, and now the U.S. Senate, protecting the Great Lakes has always been one of Senator Stabenow's top priorities. The first piece of legislation she passed in the U.S. Senate was an amendment bringing about the federal ban on drilling in the Great Lakes. She's, yes. She's been a stalwart and leading in the efforts to stop the Asian carp from moving up into the Great Lakes from out of the Calumet Harbor and among a number of points on the south side of the lake and the tens of thousands of jobs that do depend on it as White Lake would be one of the first stops in the rivers that feed into our lakes. Most recently, as chair of the Senate Subcommittee on Ag, Nutrition, and Forestry, she authored the 2014 Farm Bill, which makes one of the most significant investments in land and water and water conservation in decades. The, la <clears throat> the new law strengthens wildlife habitats around the Great Lakes and brings significant new funding to help improve water quality as well. She's a prominent national leader in an increasing partisan Congress is recognized for her ability to build coalitions and get things done for Michigan and our nation. So with that, please welcome Senator Stabenow. Uh, well, good evening. What a party. Yes. Isn't this great? I, is, I am so excited to be here. I have been really looking forward to this. And I have to say, we need to thank everybody with the book neck here. Thank you for everybody. This is an awesome place. 
it's a wonderful place to do this. And the students, thank you so much. And uh, we are counting on you because, you know, whatever we get done now has to be maintained. We have to be vigilant. And so we are counting on the next generation. You know, I look around the room and I see so many people uh, that have been involved for so long and done so much. I just want to touch on a few thank yous, knowing that there are many, many more that I could give. But certainly, Greg Mund as chair of the White Lake uh, Public Advisory Council, and Ken Mahoney, who we've already heard from as vice chair. That the duo, where are you guys? All, and all of those on the uh, Public Advisory Council. And Tanya for putting things together and as a Great Lakes, um, as an educator and putting things together tonight. Thank you for doing that. And our great mayors that are here, and I know, I think I saw State Rep uh, Colleen uh, Lamonti here and State Senator Jeff Hansen, where are they? We thank, we thank them because uh, this is such an important uh, bipartisan effort for us to be working on the Great Lakes. You know, it's in our DNA, right? Uh, it's who we are. I and mean, people say, why do you care about the Great Lakes? Well, lots and lots of reasons, uh, but one of them is because it defines who we are in Michigan. And uh, we, we all care. In need to be engaged and involved. Um, I also want to thank uh, Cam Davis, who's here, who's uh, been involved ever since, Cam's over here, He ever since uh, we started this. You know, I, I have to say that even though there's been work done for a long, long time, and things that have been happening in the community with very limited resources. It wasn't until we got a president of the United States who actually knew where Lake Michigan was, <laughs> you know, and said, we're going to really bump this up. We're going to create a Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Uh, he put out the number of $475 million as a member of the Budget Committee. I took that and ran with it and we got it passed. Uh, but Cam was there from the beginning. Thank you so much for all of your efforts as an EPA senior advisor on the Great Lakes. We appreciate it. We're so glad you're here. And the Region 5 Administrator, Susan uh, Hedman, who I believe is not here uh, this evening, but we thank everyone with the EPA. And the DEQ Office of Great Lakes, uh, John Allen, where's John, and all the team that I saw here from DEQ and EPA and everybody who loves our Great Lakes. Well, and let me officially welcome you tonight to tonight's episode of Extreme Makeover, White Lake Edition. <laughs> Nobody's got anything on us, right? It is really a privilege to be a, a part of this and to have been able to lead the effort on the funding and to watch what all of you have done as volunteers and community leaders and elected officials to make this happen. Um, this is making history. That's why we're all here tonight. Along with Deer Lake up in the UP, as you know, we have here the first communities getting a clean bill of health from the EPA, being delisted, the first communities under the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. So this is a big deal tonight, right here at White Lake and, and Deer Lake. And we know that a lot of folks are working in Muskegon, right? Not too far behind, right? We're working on Muskegon. But there are 14, 14 areas of concern in Michigan. And so we're right here. This is two down. Two down, okay. And, and that's right here. It starts right here. And there's been only one other site delisted in, in the whole country. So, again, I mean, this is something to celebrate. And we have a lot of heroes in this room. You know, Teddy Roosevelt said we should treat our natural resources as assets turning them over to the next generation, increased, improved, and not impaired in value. You know, we are loaned the Great Lakes, right? And for those of us children, grandchildren, I have one that's on the way very, very soon here. And that helps us remember that this is on loan, and that's why it's so important. You know, for generations, people of White Lake have depended on the lake and the broader natural resources. And by the time our generation got here, 
all of you got here, a lot of those resources were severely threatened. For years, thousands and thousands of gallons of sewage and industrial waste flowed into the waters of White Lake, as we know. And by the time it stopped, there was considerable damage that had been done. But everybody came together and said, you know what, not on our watch. We're going to change this, and we're going to do everything we can to make it better. And so did the people from Deer Lake up in the UP. And all of you have been recognized. In fact, uh, I understand the PAC, as you are known, right, the PAC. We, in politics, we think of the PAC as something different. <laughs> But in this case, the PAC, as you've all been known in White Lake, partnering with the Muskegon Conservation District, really did, as Greg was saying, the studies, right? Yeah. The research to determine what needed to happen. You formed relationships with the community, the state government, the federal government. And then we had the opportunity to really jumpstart this with the federal Great Lakes initiative. And you've seen what that means, almost $5 million coming into White Lake. You can see the impact with your own eyes, contractors and bulldozing and collecting contaminated sediment and hauling it away, volunteers coming out, right, in droves to work, to plant native species along the shoreline. And as Greg was saying, we have the opportunity now under the Farm Bill to add additional resources through something new called the Great Lakes Regional Partnership. But in the end, all of this really adds up to a value on something you really can't put a dollar amount on, and that is being able to flip the faucet and pour clean glass of water, being able to have the kids swim in the lake, you know, to be able to go fishing and be able to eat the fish have a great fish dinner at night, uh, to be able to welcome tourists to come in to the community, uh, to be able to see property values go up, which we know has been done. In fact, when we look at Muskegon Lake, Grand Valley State researchers found that investing $10 million on restoration in Muskegon Lake generates a million dollars in extra local spending in the economy every year, every year with home values going up, tax revenues, so local services can be provided. The impact is something that everyone should be very, very proud of. You are inspiring other communities. We have 12 other areas around our state. You are the role model. You are inspiring them. So thank you for having the courage to tackle a very big project for having the faith to stick with it, and for proving how much is possible when everybody works together. You've not only saved a lake, you are blazing a trail for other people to follow, and I'm pleased to be your partner. Congratulations. Representing uh, uh, our representative Heisinger couldn't make it, but his staff from, I think, in charge of the Holland office, Greg Van Workum, will say a few words. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Glad you made it. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we wanted to celebrate with you. Um, I wear a couple different hats on this uh, as a staff member. Um, many of you know my dad, Jerry Van Workum, who uh, formerly served as your state senator and state rep, and I remember being in high school, and he'd always talk about Tannery Bay. And I had no idea what he was talking about, but we all knew in the house it was a big deal that he was working on this project and was, um, I believe, kind of one of the starts of the first funding yep. that got put into, put into this project. Uh, I previously worked for Pete Hookstra, again, somebody that also worked on on this and worked on uh, hopefully the next delisting, as the good senator said, uh, in Muskegon with Rudiman Creek and Ryerson Creek. Uh, and now I work for Bill Heisinga, who as previously had my job that I currently had, worked for Pete Hoekstra and was working on this. And one of his first meetings was working on how to restore White Lake. So 
as all the speakers have said, it's been a long time coming. It's been a group effort, everyone together, private, public, uh, coalitions, everything you need to finally get a project like this done. So congratulations, congratulations to Tanya, and uh, sometimes her dog-headedness to get this done and persistence, but uh, we appreciate it, and we appreciate it be a part of it. So thank you and congratulations. And next, uh, Cam Davis, who is the, uh, I'm sorry, Cam, I've forgotten your title. I'm going to find you. Your senior advisor to the administrator in US EPA. And Cam's been around the Great Lakes for many years, and it's been a real asset for not only clean water, but our resources throughout the Great Lakes. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. I was going to help you out on the title, but I knew you could do it, Greg. Well, I, I can read you. <laughs> Partnerships, the name of the game. Uh, you know, it really, as you know, it, it's not something that takes one person or two. It takes all of us to get to the time and the place where White Lake is here today. All of you around this room, even if your name hasn't been mentioned, you've had a role. You've had a role to play in getting uh, to where we are today. But there are some folks who really deserve a special thanks. Uh, Senator Stabenow, we cannot thank you enough for everything you do, both here in the state and on Capitol Hill. I know this is my job. <laughs> Working for EPA Administrator uh, Gina McCarthy and the President to be on Capitol Hill, letting our legislators know what's going on with the Great Lakes. And you've got an incredibly supportive senator with Debbie Stabenow, who is uh, vice chair of the Senate Task Force, so thank you. I do want to recognize a couple of EPA staffers who are here, John Perricone and Mark Tuckman. Where are you? Raise your hands or stand up if you can. You can't imagine the dedication uh, that it takes by uh, agency staff to help day in and day out with the nuts and bolts work. And the Great Lakes Commission, I know Matt Doss is here, the PAC. Tanya, happy birthday to you. <laughs> Tanya and I started working together decades ago, and you just she had this fierce determination in her eyes about this very special place. You know, I came to uh, my very first area of concern meeting here on White Lake in 1987, and it was Black Monday, October 19th, 1987, that evening was, I believe, the first meeting, if not, it had to have been the second, uh, by the state of Michigan. Uh, John Allen's Office of the Great Lakes back then was hosting the meeting, and just as the market was crashing, White Lake was starting the process of beginning to get healthy again. And here we are today, almost 30 years later. It's really remarkable to see this happen. And it wouldn't be happening, uh, be it not, for the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative that President Obama proposed and our bipartisan Congress has supported. As you heard before, we're counting on you to keep supporting that Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, even though you're being delisted. Don't leave, uh, I know you're not gonna leave other communities high and dry. Let me close with this thought. What does the acronym AOC stand for? Area of Concern. White Lake, it's not your job to turn that acronym into something different. Area of Care. We are banking on you, banking on you, to make sure that we don't slide backwards in this very special place. Turn this place from an area of concern into an area of care starting here today. Thank you. Thanks, Cam. Senator, I know the senator's got to maybe cut out grandchild. Could be any moment. <laughs> so thank you, Senator. Thank you. <laughs> now, <clears throat> if you, those that can see, we're going to do a short slide presentation about White Lake. And we can't quite put an ink pen on there and call it delisting, but <clears throat> it is a delisting and restoration celebration. And examples of our past. 
And fortunately, I think, I think we've learned from that that you know, our resources are something to be treasured, something for our next generations, for the current generation. Our economic development, our economic prosperity relies on a clean environment. And it's really the kind of thing that those are going to be historical pictures. You won't see them again where you'll see that any day, hopefully, where you can just drive up to and see that. And <clears throat> this was what it looked like in 1985. There was a map displayed. And one thing I want to recognize, it's been mentioned, but the statewide public advisory council, the 14 areas of concern, have been organized since the early mid-90s, maybe. Yeah, Matt saying, and Matt Doss with the Great Lakes Commission is the secretariat for that organization, but it's those 14 AOCs, and there's members here, I think all but maybe one or two, uh, attending their normal quarterly meeting uh, today and then tomorrow morning. And, you know, we want to recognize them as well, because they're more or less carrying on the same effort. <clears throat> and they're scattered around Lake Michigan, and I think they're going to change the colors for both Deer Lake and White Lake from this map. I'm not sure what, but something that looks green, maybe. <laughs> uh, okay. And a listing of our milestones. Now, a lot of this is at the uh, restoringwhitelake.org? Dot com. com. Restoringwhitelake.com. There's an immense amount of, of the past history and whatnot, and these resources are there. But, you know, briefly, you know, early 70s, both Montague Whitehall, the sewer system was transferred out to the White Lake system. Hooker cleanup, the initial one in 81, 82, 87, the first remedial action plan. The plan of here's what's wrong in the White Lake area is the documentation at that point, which kind of kicked off that what Cam was referring to in regards to, hey, you're an area of concern. And a lot of people are like, so what's that mean? <clears throat> uh, it was updated, well, the PAC formed in 1991, led by the Office of uh, the Lake Michigan Federation out of Muskegon, Tanya here, and other folks in Muskegon, Kathy Evans was instrumental in that, and still working on uh, Muskegon Lake as well. The 87 plan was updated again in 95, and really started getting after, what do we got to do to clean it up? You know, what, you know, what are the actions, and it started that process. Uh, at the same time, habitat studies, tannery investigation was uh, underway. Uh, the Tannery Bay sediment cleanup occurred in 2002. And then the following year, uh, sediments from out of the Hooker outfall and uh, the western part of White Lake were removed, about 12,000 yards there. And recently, from 2010 to 2013, Jeff Auk led the charge and a former PAC chair uh, uh, accessing $2.1 million of the Gray Lakes Reg Restoration Initiative to restore habitat along White Lake. And not only, yeah. <laughs> and still carrying that on with a number of activities, not only around White Lake, Muskegon Lake, but all Muskegon County, as the Conservation District has that responsibilities and leadership that they're doing. Uh, let's see. The Tannery land site was cleaned up, which was co quite an accomplishment. And it wasn't for the DEQ staff out of the Grand Rapids office. Heather Hopkins, among others, Tom Berdensky involved. I'm not sure if Heather's here. And yes, excuse me, Roger Jones, who is retired. I don't know where Roger is. But very instrumental were cleaned up and met the criteria for what you know really does remove the waste from out of the lake as well as on land. As, as many know, there was a lot of toxics left there on the shoreline, now removed. And then a final sediment cleanup, there was a small sliver that was missed in those earlier cleanups, and that was removed last year. And since then, we've been removing the beneficial use impairments, the eight of them that affected uh, White Lake. There's 14 in total that were listed throughout the Great Lakes, and White Lake was identified with eight, and we removed them all. So, I'm taking longer than what I wanted. Ah, the PAC, we established in 92, we meet monthly, it's been a core group, as well as others participating throughout the community. 
uh, we've worked closely, and I mean closely, in the partnerships with both state and federal, as well as local units of government and staff to really make, that's what really, that partnership amongst all those levels have made the difference in regards to removing those beneficial use impairments. And it'll make the difference in how we move forward with White Lake at the same time. We're not out of the woods. We're as clean as every other lake in Lake in Michigan. But, you know, let's be a little cleaner. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and, of course, the administrative technical support that the Conservation District has provided since day one, early 90s, to the Public Advisory Council here in White Lake and early on in Muskegon Lake. And without question, we were a science-based cleanup. And the uh, individuals at the Annis Water Resource Institute, Grand Valley State University, right on the shores of Muskegon Lake, uh, Dr. Al Steinman's done an immense amount of work with Doc, uh, Dr. Rick Radisky, as well as geez, a number of researchers over the years. And that's really been the documentation for us to stand on and say, yes, it's clean. It meets our criteria. <clears throat> 2011, we started removing those beneficial use impairments, those eight, and finished last spring with the last one in, uh, in May of 2014. We hosted a uh, public meeting in White Lake Library on June 25th, followed then with the comment process that occurred right after that, because there is quite a lengthy process, and we've gotten to it now about five months, six months, I guess, to go through that process of approval because there's a number of agencies as well as organizations, excuse me, yeah, tribal groups, on up from state to the federal, to the Canadian government, and of course our uh, national uh, state department approving that, which was a pleasant surprise this morning. So we're delisted as of about 9.30 this morning, at least as far as <laughs> the news, anyway. Yep, and Tanya is going to cover some of the steps that we're going to be moving forward with that. I don't think I've had such a big birthday party, <laughs> <laughs> or such a nice gift. You know, really, the, the timing was was excellent, and really, um, you know, this has just been so exciting for you know people who've been involved and people in the community. I'm I'm very appreciative of everyone who's come out to to participate because we're not going to do this again. You know, we're not going to get on the area concern list and work for another 22 years and then have another delisting party. So this is it. I'm glad you showed up. And um, yeah, Cam and I go ways back. I think when I first started doing what I was doing, I had kids who did not go to school yet. And now I have two grandchildren. So, uh, but you know, it's kind of a nice story to tell your grandchildren that you know there was uh, there were people in this community that were able to make a positive difference. And for me. And I need to get going on this. I just, to me, it's just such an example of, you know, people being frustrated, not being able to see things happen at different levels, you know, local, state, and federal. But this is what we did here. And I, I think we're really an example to other communities. And I think we really have a long way to go because we, we're not done. Um, but um, there's a lot more that we can do and we have to do for the lake. Anyway, um, We've actually done some surveys and talked to folks in the community, and people have made it clear that, you know, they would not, they, they, they don't really want us to just, just close the door and turn off the lights and, and stop what we're doing. And so uh, one of the things we're starting, actually, we've already started, is we're starting a strategic planning effort to look at, okay, you know, we had problems that we identified for the lake. We had goals that we met um, that doesn't make the lake perfect, it puts it on a level playing field. It means it's like Pent Water Lake, other lakes that haven't had our history. Um, but we need to maintain that progress. And there's a lot more that we can do. And so we're um, beginning a strategic planning effort, already have begun, where we're pulling together people from the community and looking at, well, what are some of the things that still have to be paid attention to? You know, contaminated sites, um, looking at the sedimentation issue, you know, that comes down the river. What's that list of, of activities? What, what are some new goals that we need to set for ourselves and work toward, and how can we make this happen? So that's going to be happening. We're very fortunate to have the services of Mike Mack of Montague, uh, just a tremendous uh, background in organizational development. And, and then there again, we have talent in our area. You know, there are people here who really have a lot to offer. 
And so very excited about that. Kind of keep an eye on it because we're going to be coming out to the community at different points and, and talk about where we're at and, and get feedback from you. That's actually the site that Greg mentioned, restoringwhitelake.com. It's actually a, a project with the library. It has a lot, it has over 30 interviews of people, a lot of them in this room, done by Oscar Oswald here. And um, just kind of getting viewpoints about, you know, what happened as far as the pollution history, recovery. And then um, the Public Advisory Council, if you will get on this site, there's buttons across the top. Way on the right-hand side, it says White Lake Pack. So the library kindly allowed us to put our White Lake Pack web pages there because, you know, it's going to be history. In fact, it really is history. So that's where you will find information about what's still happening with the Public Advisory Council. Also, next week uh, we have a meeting uh, with um, Avenue ISR, Woody Smith uh, from Traverse City. He conducted research for White Lake and Muskegon Lake in order to help us kind of prepare for um, our life after delisting, you know, kind of looking at the perceptions of people who live here, people who visit, prospective visitors to see, you know, is there something we can learn to better plan for our future. That There's a meeting November 5th, next Wednesday, 6 to 8 at the library. So just to show you, we're not done <laughs> yet. Um, we're working on a documentary video. I don't know if folks have seen the tragedy of White Lake done by Grand Valley State University in 1978. It's on that website. It's a really fascinating history. You can see folks like Wynn Dahlstrom, Marion Dawson, um, the whistleblower, and that's called The Tragedy of White Lake. And the documentary video that we are developing is called Bringing Back White Lake, the Beautiful. And we're going to show two of those back to back when we're done. And there's a committee of, of folks in the community working on that with Oscar. I can't read this. Okay, there will be updates on strategic planning. And then in the spring, we're going to put on a workshop. We want to let folks know about all of the environmental programs that are out there that are in place now that we can access and use to continue to protect White Lake. So just because we're out of the Area of Concern program, uh, we're not done. There are other programs um, that, that we can use to continue to protect our lake. Pack newsletter and follow us on Facebook, I think. What's next? And then just a thank you. And I think this comes from everybody on the pack. Thanks to the community, um, elected officials, um, this, the Department of Environmental Quality, John Riley, raise your hand up front. You know, we've, we've really developed a good relationship with the folks that we've worked with. And um, Mark Tuckman in the back, I, I just can't see that far. <laughs> but, you know, it's, to me, it's an example of how how government should work at the local, state, and federal level. We've developed a good partnership, and we've gotten some good things done. Uh, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, absolutely. Um, Muskegon Conservation District, their services have been essential. Without them, we would not be here today. We're very fortunate to have them. Grand Valley State, and then just a lot of people. Greg and I talked about... Uh, how do you acknowledge? How do you acknowledge? You know, we actually sat down and thought about developing a list, and then we thought we're going to leave somebody out. You know, so it's, you know, a lot of people that deserve thanks, people who are here tonight and people who are not. But um, it's just, um, you know, you all should be feel very proud of, of yourselves for, part for participating and, and for living in a community that, you know, we struggled with pollution like many com communities, but we did something about it. So I think that's it here. And then we have our state folks, right, Greg? Um, who's next on the list? Oh, Senator Jeff Hansen. Uh, state Senator Jeff Hansen is, we're, this is now our time for state elected and state officials. And so he's up here to talk. And one thing to point out, all throughout this process, we have had help, good help from both sides of the aisle. And we really appreciate that. Wow, what a great evening this is, and especially exciting to have it at Tanya's birthday. That's uh, <laughs> how fitting. <laughs> it really is. I just want to say thanks for everybody for coming for this special celebration to recognize, and what I have written on here is the White Lake Habitat Restoration 
efforts. But we all know now that it's not. It's Tanya's birthday. <laughs> so it's great. I mean, there's there's so many different play, uh, people that had a lot to do with this. You know, we have the Muskegon Conservation District. We've got the Office of the Great Lakes, the DQ, the EPA. But we have to go back to the Public Advisory Council and our local community leaders because this doesn't get done without the people who put their put their heart and soul into it and that's how these things get done it doesn't come from somebody else it comes from inside it comes from the people of the area who have the vested interest and I gotta tell you I am so proud to be part of this part of this community because it's it means so much from where we started to where we're at today. And it takes a lot to go 33 years? 30? The Public Advisory Council is 22. Well, what did I, what did I, what did I hear? Somebody say 30, 30, 30 plus years? Trying to finish this because the perseverance is unbelievable. So, you know, a big thank you to everybody who was part of this. A big thank you to the people who brought it to the attention of the people and to the leaders who kept it going, who kept everybody on task and worked through everything that had to be worked through because this is not an easy thing. This is teamwork. This is local people. This is state government, this is federal government, all working as one. And so I certainly want to say that it's been a huge turnaround. I've been around a couple of times because Tanya does get your attention. <laughs> <laughs> and I do appreciate that because it makes you understand how much it means to everybody and it's great because we have the best area in the world. And we need to keep it that way. So thank you very much. Great job. And our representative, Colleen Lamonte, who represents in the Montague native is at the same time, you're going to save a few words for us as well. Thanks, Colleen. keep it short whoops sorry um, yeah so many people have said so many of the things that have need to be said about up here it, it really is it's about the community and the hard work and dedication that the members here have given for decades to make sure that this lake was cleaned up um, you know when my family moved here uh, a few years ago my kids were uh, gosh they were babies almost at that point I thought this is a great community to raise our kids in and just all the natural resources, the lakes and the lake shore, um, what a great thing. And then I learned a little bit more about the history and what the people of this community have been fighting for for such a long time. And it is just great to see all of this come to fruition and you know have this lake get cleaned up. As a science teacher, I taught um, biology students and one of the things that we I used to teach them was the importance of our ecological systems and all of the interconnected relationships that we need are so fragile and that we need to protect. And that's why we have to keep up the work here. It isn't just about celebrating today, because that is important, but it is about making sure that we continue that protection for White Lake, for our lake shores, for our dunes, our critical dunes areas. And uh, I know that uh, we'll, we'll keep working on that along with so many of the people here in this room. So uh, again, this is a great day and a great celebration. And uh, you all have so much to be proud of. And our other representative that covers the southern part of our White Lake area is Representative Marsha Hovey Wright, and Marsha's got a few words kind of for us as well. 
Wow, what a great night, huh? And a happy birthday and a delisting and what more could we want? And a whole community here to celebrate a very special, a special night, very special delisting. Um, before Senator Stabena left, she, she said, I kind of tried to push it along so it happened tonight. <laughs> or today, you know, before tonight. So you can also thank uh, uh, Stabenoff for what her little behind the scenes part. So my, my district does not include White Lake, um, but it doesn't mean that it's not important to, uh, to, my, to my district, because what happens here, we have, a, we have a, an area of concern in Muskegon Lake. So um, what, what has happened here, we hope to have happen in Muskegon Lake, where if you remember what the kids said, it went from, you know, debris and, and contamination and chemicals and, and people not being able to fish or swim or uh, afraid to touch the water, et cetera, to hope and, and community and, and happiness and all those wonderful things. And that's kind of what we hope to have happen following your example um, of a whole community coming together and, and using your talents and, and honing those talents. I, I'm, I'm hearing that uh, they are, some of the people are, or that you're already being asked to um, attack another problem that um, using those same skills and that you've learned doing this. Uh, so my hat's off to you um, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm very excited for you and hopeful for Muskegon Lake that we can experience a, a similar uh, delisting down the road. Um, I was talking with Kathy, Kathy Evans about, about that earlier tonight. Um, and all the people, all of you need to be thanked. There are many leaders, obviously, and they've all been mentioned, but I bet everyone in this room has done something. Um, or, or your heart is, you know, there as well. Um, so uh, a healthy lake is a healthy community in so many ways, not just health-wise, but economically. I think that will start to change as well uh, as people will feel good about, about the lake and feel safe using it. And uh, I think that will help the tourism industry. I see some people who have B&Bs, et cetera, in the audience. And, um, uh, so before I get off the stage, however, I'd just like to say thanks to the musicians who played my kind of music. Thank you. Nobody mentioned that. <laughs> So this room seems to be, we seem to be sort of age mates in this room here. We're all sort of in the same era. So, uh, but congratulations again and happy birthday to Tanya. Thank you. And now, uh, a critical state partner, the Office of the Gray Lakes. And John Allen is with us tonight, and he's the director of that office under the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, and without question, the Office of the Great Lakes has played one of the key roles as a partner. Uh, you've heard from a lot of folks that have had pieces to do with this, but this is the community's celebration. This is the community's moment. I cannot tell you how pleased, thrilled, joyful that we are that you felt as a community that what you had 20, 30, 40 years ago was unacceptable and that you took the hard road to say, what I want to give to the future was not what was given to you. That is a testament to dedication and dissatisfaction with the status quo, but that is a call to say, we get to, ter ter we get to determine our own future. This is not the future that was only handed to us and the one that we had to accept. This is a future that we got to make, that you got to make here in your own community. On behalf of the governor and the state of Michigan, and certainly the office that's traveled this path with you, and John Riley, who's spent a lot of time here in the community with you, on, on all of our behalfs, we want to say thank you, not just for the delisting and the work on specifically this, but for showing the people of Michigan and for showing the people of the Great Lakes what determination and care and thoughtfulness and identity and dissatisfaction and probably a little anger at times, right? A little bit of uh, determination, a little bit of stubbornness, a little bit, what, you know, all those wonderful words. What that ends up showing for a community. This is an exercise in self-governance. This is an exercise in self-determination. What we have doesn't have to be 
the peace that's only acceptable to us. We get to choose what that future looks like, and we only have to look here to see how that happens. You give hope to a lot of communities that are dealing with this in other places, not just the AOC programs, but that want to change the trajectory of their community, that want to look, and we're looking in Detroit, or Marquette, or Ontonagon, or Alpena, or other communities, not only the ones that have the old AOC determination. There should be a resolution here in town to say we're going to have to ban that word from town, right? The, the new AOC, and we'll talk about that in a brief moment, but take that moment tonight, tomorrow, at a quiet moment, and to really think about what you've just given your own future. The children that were up here giving a speech, you've handed them something that you created. And I find that just deeply moving. And I think the people of Michigan, when they really fully understand what you've done and how long that's taken, will find that to be deeply moving. I want to, I want to, you know, Senator Stabenow is no longer here. I told her thank you before, and I've seen her a number of times. Really, the determination to try to provide the kinds of resources and the drive to make this happen is really important. So we see that in a bipartisan way through Senate. Our EPA partners are really, Cam's been a friend of mine for a long time now, and I really value that friendship. But really, through the whole EPA, and tell Chris and Susan thank you from us. When Chris Koroleski was here, head of the Great Lakes National Program Office, he stood here and made a commitment that he would do everything he could, as, as the senator did, to move, move along this process so that it would coincide with your night. And that's a promise made, and that's a promise kept. And to Chris and to Susan, we say thank you for all their work that they did on kind of getting us to this point, too. Give them a round of applause. You get to turn a page. You get to turn the page on this chapter. There's many, many more chapters to be written. But you know what the beautiful thing is? It's a beautifully blank page that you get to start to write in. Tanya you went through a couple of steps that you're going to think about on the next piece, but you get to write that chapter. That should feel really good and empowering and a little daunting and a little scary, but you get to write that. You get to determine what that looks like. I was just in Alpena a couple of months ago. Um, Alpena's a different community going through a different process. Alpena lost a paper factory a, a number of years ago, Fletcher Paper, uh, and that community lost 300 jobs nearly overnight, and that community sort of stood in a bit of uh, sort of stunned silence for a while trying to figure out what his next future is. And if you've been to Alpena recently, you've seen it turn its face to the water. You've seen it embrace its nautical heritage, its maritime heritage, its shipwreck heritage. Even the little hockey team in town is now called the Rex, or the, I think they're, they're called the Rex. So <laughs> it, it's become a part of their culture again, and, and you see that vibrancy. They are writing their story just like you are. But the beautiful piece at that celebration in, in, in Alpena that I saw, they got to change the verb from we are to we were. In this case, from what we were here to what we will be. You, you get to change the page and you get to change the verb tonight. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a small piece, it's a small little word. But think about that as you drive to your future. Again, on behalf of the governor, on behalf of the state of Michigan, really on behalf of the folks of the Great Lakes region, who we look to you for inspiration. I say congratulations and have a great party. Now, somebody put a plug in for the band, Acoustic Oasis. Their tip jar is right here. They are playing for free, except for that everybody here throws in and makes sure that they're reimbursed appropriately. So don't leave without donating. Um, the other thing is, and it's, it's kind of a weird idea, but you could turn to each person that, you know, sitting next to you and tell them congratulations. We're done. We're delisted. So. Now. We're not done. We're done with the formal part of it, and Tandy's going to fill you in. This, this is going to be a little tricky. We really wanted to have this here, and so we want to thank um, Mark and Brian from the Book Nook and Rebecca and everybody who's helping. But this is the tricky part. This is the time that we get to party. You know, and we don't want to just go home, you know. So this is this is the time. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
Thank you very much. This was the only day that would work for this, partly because of Greg's schedule. Um, <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, that's fine. Oh, I, don't care. I think it was golf yesterday or something. I don't know. Yeah, but I'm anyway, um, it, it, it really could not have been a better birthday present. And I hope you're all as excited as, as we are. This is just really, um, it's just, it is a gift to our community and kind of shows what we can do. And, you know, hopefully when we're, you know, going about our daily business and we're struggling with a community issue, we remember what we've done and that we have the ability to get these things done and to work together. So it's just really, it's just really neat. I'm really excited about it, more than I can even say. Now, this is going to be the tough part because we are going to, we have refreshments. Uh, there's a cash bar. There's some special drinks that they prepared for us. Not free, of course, but like a sangria. Um, there's 10% off on all merchandise. We're here until 10 o'clock with the band, who actually is one of my favorite bands, so I'm really excited about that. Um, they're, they're just lovely. Um, but we, we need to kind of put things back into the usual book nook setting. <laughs> We're going to so, move some chairs around. That's um, right. So if, you know, if, if you're not interested, just kind of, you know, um, gradually move aside, but we're going to rely on some folks who can kind of help us with the chairs. The senior center loaned us some chairs. We're going to stack up. Those are the black ones. We need to stack and them the over ones. here. White and the white ones, too? Okay, yeah. and the white ones. And then, you know, certainly only participate if you want, but, you know, we cleaned up White Lake. We can... <laughs> We could put the book nook back in order, but I hope you'll stick around and have a lot of fun. The the the, stoves, the folks from the statewide public advisory council are kind of hiding in the corner over there, uh, but they're a lovely group. They're scattered around. Yeah, they're scattered around. But you know, there's people from out of the area that that are here and visitors. And um, thank you all, all the speakers. And you know, it's time to time to have a little fun. So, but help us out, kind of reorganize if you can. Thank you. Thank you. Where's your car?